You're listening to the LaunchCast, your favorite podcast on the planet, brought to you by Launchpad 516 Studios with me, your host, George Andriopoulos. We're talking leadership, business, life, and growth right now as the countdown starts. It's like food for your ears. At this time, I'm going to ask that you fasten your seatbelts. Launch sequence. Launch sequence activated. Launch sequence activated. Five, four, three, two, one. Welcome to the LaunchCast, episode 313, it's the 2021 holiday giving show, we are back baby, I got my Santa t-shirt on, don't stop believing, a little bit different than last year's t-shirt, we got guests here today, we got a co-host today, we're having a good time, but first, it's the Launch Dad himself bringing you your favorite podcast on the planet. Leadership, business, life, growth, holly, Christmas trees, joy as the beat drops. Into the black hole. What is happening, everybody? George Andriopoulos back with the launch cast for episode 313, our holiday show. I have been talking this one up for weeks and weeks and weeks. We hit some bumps in the road getting here, but we got here, we pulled this thing together last night. I'll tell you the whole story later, but it involves COVID and and daycare and and school and forget it, it was a a nightmare. But we are here and I am so thankful that we're here. So let's get some business out of the way first. Uh, We have one more show after this one before the end of the year. We are still going straight through, no pausing. We took off last week's show. Uh, We usually come to you weekly because it was the season premiere of the Over My Dad podcast, my other show with my co-host Dave Thompson. And we actually had our holiday show last week, which was a blast. So please catch um, episode one of season two of the Over My Dad podcast, uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all the places, wherever you get your podcast. So check that out. It was a it was a great, great show. We had some uh, guests. We had Jimmy Doyle on, ska punk legend Jimmy Doyle. Uh, and we had John and Mark Cronin on from John's Crazy Socks, my good friends, uh, who, by the way, are also, when we talk about Launchpad 516 Studios, the new podcast production company, They have signed on to do their very own podcast with our company uh, called the Spreading Happiness Podcast. So that's coming in the new year. Uh, We can't wait for that. But today we're here for the holiday show and I couldn't do the holiday show without a co-host, of course. So let me bring my friend on screen here. Let's see. Hello. Hello. There she is. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. This is Mrs. Claus. Mrs. Claus. There she is, yes, everybody. I am. There she is. <laughs> Dr. Dana Battaglia. That's right. My friend, my good, good friend, Dana. Dana has served the Eden 2 Genesis program in various capacities since it opened in 1995. Her current title is clinical coordinator, where she is focusing on staff development. Dana received her PhD in the speech language hearing service, speech language hearing sciences from the City University of New York. She is a licensed speech language pathologist and teacher of the speech and hearing handicapped in New York State. She holds a certificate of clinical competence from the American. American Speech Language and Hearing Association, ASHA. Dana has conducted presentations on autism and speech language related topics at the local, state, national, and international levels. She serves as an associate professor at Adelphi University and is a past president of the Long Island Speech Language Hearing Association, LISHA. She is also, and more importantly, a wife, a mom, fitness enthusiast, foodie, lover of coffee, especially my coffee here in the office, chocolate and the color purple, not the movie, the actual color. Yes, the actual color. The actual color. (laughs) Hello, my friend. Hello. Best friend. (laughs) Forever. Uh, No. BFF. (laughs) So not, but okay, whatever. (laughs) We're back for the holiday giving show. If you guys remember last year, if you're fans. It was so fun. Yeah, if you're fans of the launch cast, if you're one of the three fans of the launch cast, which includes me and Dana, so there's only one left. Um... 
If you're one of the fans of the Launchcast, you remember last year was our first ever holiday giving show. Uh, it was a bla- It was also subtitled the one where we acted like Oprah for an hour. Yes, it yeah. was actually fun to be Oprah for an hour. That was great, right? <laughs> so what we did there was we had um, four organizations on last year. So let me remember. So we had LICAB on, mm-hmm. our good friend Joe Salomon at Long Island Coalition Against Bullying. Uh, talked about his organization, gave him some money. Um, we talked to Dave Thompson from the Nicholas Center. Yep. Uh, Inspectrum Designs, we gave them some money. The Interfaith Nutrition Network with our, my, my girl Dana Lopez. Our girl Dana Lopez from The Inn, uh, and also Matt Campo, CEO mm-hmm. of Ronald McDonald House New York Metro. And uh, for those two, for Ronald McDon- McDonald House New York Metro and The Inn, uh, our foundation, our nonprofit Shannon's Fight that we co founded along with our other incredible board members, gave to very sizable donations, yes. which we were super proud that of. That was really awesome. Yeah. That was, was that was such a great way to end it was great. 2020. I know. Such a shitty year and we ended it. <laughs> such yeah, it a good It was really way. crappy, but we, we uh, you know, we always come out on top. Yeah, yeah, really. So. And I remember I remember the following week I was uh, recording my New Year's episode uh, for this, I think. Um, I just remember being in my feelings, just thinking about like what we had done there and just. Yeah, uh, it was nice. It was a feeling that stayed with us for a long time. Yeah, yeah. And and, and where that came from. So we're talking about Shannon's Fight, um, uh, the nonprofit foundation that we, like we mentioned, we co-founded back in 2011. I know. Imagine. Oh my God. It's been 10 years. It's been Can't 10 it. years. And we, we, we co-founded that in, in honor of uh, our, in, in the image of our girl Shannon, yeah. uh, who Shannon Sirks, my sister-in-law, who we have since lost, um, who was diagnosed at a very young age back then with rhabdoid cancer. Uh, and it was Shannon's request to found this organization and to help people like her. Yeah. People and in it helped crisis. her so much in her battle because it, it gave her something to talk about, something to focus on. Yeah. You know, it really, um, I think it, helped her to fight as long as she did yeah i totally believe that i really do gave her purpose yeah gave her purpose and uh when you're going through something in life um and i I could speak from experience man when you go through something in life and there's some kind of purpose there to ground you to balance you uh it helps get you through it yeah you know so i can't give her a reason to wake up in the morning yeah yeah i can't imagine with her what that uh what that felt like but I will say that um, we were so passionate about the organization, not because, not just because it was her and she was such an incredible person, but um, you know, for somebody to be sick, right, and and to be able to be in a position to ask for something for yourself, right? She was approached by Make a Wish and and all the stuff, and and that was her ask. She just wanted to. She just wanted to help other people. Yeah, yeah. she wanted to. Start she could have a had anything she wanted. Yeah. Yeah, she could have. She totally could have. Yeah. She could have done the whole, like, I want to go to Disney World and, and yes. do everything and whatever. And she, she could have had it all. She probably could have met Justin Bieber. Oh, totally. You know, <laughs> um, who was very big at the time. <laughs> I'm not sure where he is these days, I but maybe that's either. just because I'm too I think old. he's still big. Again, we're just too old for it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, so, and, and that kind of led us all on a real uh a journey man um Mm -hmm. and and taught me so much about um the importance of giving the importance of having that component of your life yeah right servant leadership and and um thinking of others first and uh and that's what the last couple of episodes honestly i know i'm i'm droning on about this guys like for the last few episodes we had uh uh um Tiny Soapbox show about giving uh, on Giving Tuesday. I replayed last week, last year's um, uh, holiday giving show last week uh, as a launch cast reboot. Um, this is the time of year. Yeah. You know, this is the time of year. And, I, and I'll tell you that uh, if this isn't part of your life, giving, um, make it a part of your life. And it doesn't have to be money. It could be your time. It could be your services. Uh, uh, it could really be anything. It, it really adds a layer of depth to understanding other people and and just makes you feel selfishly it makes you feel yeah and even you know um like you said if you don't have money what's you know if you have children they're watching yeah you know so um you know our son joseph is is, has just a generous heart he just was born that way i i really believe that but 
we also make it a point to make it a point. Yeah. You know, and so, you know, he's always been a servant. Um, and I'm not going to say that, um, you know, we don't go to church every Sunday, but, you know, he always gets involved in these amazing acts of service. And like one of his favorite things to do, which is a job that most kids don't like to do, is cleaning up the cemetery after oh. the wreaths yeah. are put out. No one remembers that the wreaths have to be cleaned up. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's, that was like one of his favorite things to do. That's amazing. You know, and that's an act, that's a service, that's a, a that's generosity, you know? And, um, you know, a couple of, I think it was last weekend, we went and, um, you know, spread some holiday cheer with families in need yes. um, on the cheer bus. And, uh, you know, it, it's just really important. And again, there was no monetary transaction observed Right. Um, but it's still, a, you know, an act. And we actually, uh, James and I told Joseph that next year we're going to let him choose what he wants to do. Because up until now, we've kind of like, oh, hey, do you, this came to my desk. Do you want to do this? And he always says yes. Right. But now we're going to, you know, he's going to be 10 now. And because he's 10, it's like this magic number. I don't know why. Yeah. Like in maturity. Okay. Yeah. And like we're going to. Double just, digits. Yeah, man. It always means something. Yeah. It's like very important. <laughs> So, um, and we've talked about different options already, you know, and it's not just around the holiday. Like I said, the cleaning up the wreaths isn't a holiday activity. So I think that it's really important for us as parents to show our kids what that means. He's really excited if and when we're able, ever able to get to the Ronald McDonald house. Yep. He really soon. wants- Soon, soon, it's wait. coming soon. He really wants to cook for them. Dana, if you're listening, um, he's ready to volunteer at the Interfaith Nutrition Network once he's 10, because that D-Lo, is- we're talking to you. Yes, because that is actually a, a, um, a requirement that kids have to be 10. And he even wants to volunteer at um, a local animal shelter where he has to be 16, so he has a little while yet. He is all over that too. Yeah, all oh, they could go yeah. together, it'd be great. Let me, let me tell you, uh, I'm not worried about them at all no you know uh, no uh, but in general i just felt like i had to say that our kids are watching whether it's our kids or the proverbial our kids yeah you know yeah. no totally and 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 that's something that i think about a lot when you talk about it is fucking stressful raising kids man oh and, and, please and not just the day-to-day -day, but when you look at the macro you look at the big picture and you're like oh my god who is this person going to turn out to be and in an this adult. what is this world going to in look this like world, right yes uh and it's scary and i've i've kind of found a calmness in going like and especially as, as somebody that you know and i talk about this on the show all the time that has really taken a look at my own life and and tried to um you know fix things that i that i thought were wrong about me mm -hmm. uh in the past and try to grow as a human being and i was perfect go, by the way dana was Perfect yeah. always, yes. Perfect always, Doc <laughs> Martens and all. Um, but yeah, you, I found this sort of calmness in, in in really thinking like you know if you're putting out the right stuff, um, and you're you're bringing them up in the right environment and you're instilling the right values in them, you got to just let go and kind of yeah. you know. And and I know my kids, your kid, you know, they're going to be just fine because yeah. they are raised in homes that that value certain things you know you talk about people of service like we yeah. get it right well i've worked uh, my whole career in yeah, nonprofit. absolutely i've never worked in a for-profit environment i don't know what that is yeah yeah you know yeah yeah so um but yeah you know so important guys to to make sure that you are making this a part of your routine every year i hate to be a broken record but just it, it doesn't have to be money just your time think about other people help one person uh, i saw great programs going on in thanksgiving where you just donate 10 bucks towards somebody getting a turkey on their table for their family they can't uh, you know they can't uh, uh do it themselves or, or buy the turkey for them you know what i mean mm -hmm. i mean just it, anything you do uh could be helpful so uh I'm, I'm happy that we're doing this this year again uh it's always exciting to do uh this episode and hopefully this this becomes a thing where we're just doing this together be so every fun. year it will be so fun little known fact by the way we talked about this year years ago i don't remember what the name was but dana and i jokingly talked about doing a cooking, a cooking show, show. Yeah. oh my god it'll be so fun <laughs> <laughs> I will cut your thumb right off. <laughs> That's right. It would have been it would have been the most enjoyable cooking show. If we could do it as a podcast, that would be great. Yeah. But, nobody uh, would notice. Nobody would notice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What do we have next here? Oh, who's coming? Oh, look at that. We have a guest at the door. 
Come on in. It's Christmas. Hey, there he is. <laughs> carolers. Carolers are here. Woo! Welcome, welcome. <laughs> How are you? Good to see you. Doing well. Thank you for having me. Oh, of course, of course. Guys, let me do the quick bio here, the quick intro. So this is Father Demetrios Kazakis. Uh, you may recognize him from the LaunchCast episode 118, which was called Our Father Who Art on Podcast. <laughs> Uh, he is the residing priest at St. Nicholas Greek Orthodox Church in Babylon, New York. Uh, Father D received an associate's degree in communication and broadcasting from SUNY Oswego in 2005. He graduated from Hellenic College Holy Cross with a bachelor's degree in religious studies and master's in divinity in 08 and 11, respectively. He was ordained as a deacon by His Eminency Archbishop Demetrios of America. Uh, in July of 2011, and, and as a priest by His Grace Bishop Andonios of Faziani on June 30th, 2012. Um, this this man is, uh, uh, in our community, such a great man. We've had him on the podcast before. He's been excellent. Today, we're here to talk specifically about the food pantry at St. Nicholas, but we want to say welcome, Father D. Thank you very much. Thank you again for having me. Uh, absolutely. We're so happy to have you here. So, uh First of all, I want to ask you, tell us a little bit about the food pantry at St. Nicholas. So the, um, the food pantry has been, um, obviously, it's, it's a, labor, a labor of love, mm -hmm. for lack of a better expression, because it's a lot of work, and um, it's been a challenge getting this uh, started. But um, within our community, we've been wanting to have a food ministry or a feeding ministry for uh, almost the last uh, 10 years we've been talking about it. I've been in the community for a little over nine. Uh, we began very slowly with just giving food cards to those who were in need, like grocery cards. Um, then we were able to have um, some affiliation with some other feeding ministries, soup kitchens, food pantries, uh, shut-in shelters, etc. We finished our new uh, community center and building project uh, we began uh, in, let's see, it was July of 2019. And right when we began steel work and groundbreaking and a lot of heavy work, coronavirus hit. We lost a lot of time. And even though we were in the middle of uh, coronavirus difficulties, we still had our facility on the lower level of our building. We started with one shelf of just dry goods, mostly cereal, pasta, canned goods, things like this in one shelf. And now um, our food pantry takes up about a quarter of our basement. Uh, we serve close to 40 to 50 families a week, which is good. Sometimes, like now around the holidays, we, get, we serve close to 60 families. We have a freezer and a walk-in refrigerator in our basement now in our uh, facility, in our community center. So anyone who comes in, they can get frozen goods. They can get fresh fruits, milk dairy products, etc. So starting very simply uh, a few years ago to a full-blown working um, food pantry now was always our dream. Our administrator, Patty Virilis, uh, works very hard. Uh, she began the food pantry really and she spearheaded this program in memory of her father, Jordan Salomides, who passed away a few years ago. But now uh, with all the work that uh, we have to do, thank God, uh, <laughs> this is our daughter, Eleni. Hello. 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 Thank you, Kukla. Can you say hi to George and Dana? Thank you for hi. interrupting my... <laughs> hi. How are you, <laughs> sweetheart? I know. I love it. I love it. Downstairs. It's beautiful. I'm, here, let's show the Grinch. Look at this. See, can you yes. see this? Perfect. Is that Perfect. Awesome? I need a smile. Yeah, Aww. the Grinch is smiling, though. How could a Grinch not Grinch smile around you? Smile all the time. No, at the end he does. Yeah, That's right. When his heart grows, right? Thank can, you, Kukla. Can I ask you, you something? Go back downstairs? Can you make Oh, wait. Mr. Call? George is talking. Hold on. You know the Grinch that you have on your paper? Well, hold on. Did you hear Mr. George? Yeah, let's look at the Grinch on the paper. Go See ahead. the Grinch on the paper? Yeah. Yeah. That's the original right there. Doesn't it, doesn't it look just oh. like her? Wait, My Dana's friend Dana? The original Grinch? <laughs> She's the How original. No. Oh, it was oh, like pulling teeth to get her to wear her Mrs. Her Mrs. Claus shirt today. <laughs> okay. Go back to your room, though, okay? Right. <laughs> so anyway, um, about the food pantry, the um, 
the last thing that we the last thing I just wanted to mention we serve um, Tuesdays thank you we serve Tuesdays um, in the evening four to six we serve um, Thursdays 10 to 12 we work in close connection with Long Island Harvest and Long Island wow. cares so that's how we're able to get a lot of our uh, sort of like unspecified food needs which mm -hmm. is great but um, we're always looking for volunteers to help stock shelves work with those who come in and anyone who has donations of any type of uh, dry food we can usually take watching expiration dates and things like this but um, we have about a dozen volunteers we're always looking for more help and um, we're so happy that uh, the program took off unfortunately it's because of a need but God willing, uh, we can continue, and the uh, the community really, as a parish, really serves well, and we're very thankful. Yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. I, I noticed you you mentioned Long Island Harvest, and I think I don't know exactly how this works. Maybe you know Dana, but uh, I know that when the schools were fully remote, mm -hmm. um, that's the name that I would see uh, when they were offering food yes. to to kids uh, to come pick up at the school right mm -hmm. during the pandemic. So, so th this stuff is all related, guys. Um, the, these food pantries work together with these organizations to really uh, get food to people that, that need it in a big way. So um, thank you for all your efforts, Father D, and, and what you do. And we wanted to highlight the food pantry because, you know, this is the holiday giving show, right? And so we, we did the first one of these last year, which was so much fun. And Dana was a part of that, huge part of that episode. Um, but giving starts in our own community. And for me, I, you know, I thought of you immediately as, as my, my local parish. Um, and I know that uh, the food pantry is a huge passion of yours. And so we wanted to, uh, to highlight it and, and let people know that um, there's always the help that's needed, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, this time is, uh, we, we, we definitely saw an increase from Thanksgiving until now. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, different challenges with coronavirus. We're starting to see that people are losing their working opportunities. They're not losing a job, but people are losing hours, and it's just it's becoming stressful. So anything that we can provide, anything that we can do to work with uh, these other organizations, with our volunteers to serve faithfully, uh, we're always blessed, and we we are always thankful. Yeah. No, and, and we appreciate all of your efforts for the community. It's amazing. Um, talk a little bit about, um, you know, being a, a ministry and, and having so many, um, I don't want to say organizations within the ministry. I've, I've just become more uh, aware of everything that runs out of the church um, in terms of the, you know, the, the, the Greek school, the Sunday school, the, the, all of the different organizations. Talk a little bit about the importance of uh, giving during the holidays and and how much it helps support these organizations throughout the year so we have um, you know within the parish uh, within the parish life I mean everything uh, you know people say that it's like the pyramid the pyramid model that the priest is on the top of the pyramid and then everything just goes down after that but I don't really agree with that I work with every organization I work with every ministry um, our ladies philanthropic association it's called Philoptochos it's the second largest philanthropic organization within the United States and then it's top 10 um, actually you know when you look at international ministry with all the work that they do in Greece and Europe um, parishes in Africa and South America we have a local chapter within our parish we have youth ministries we have mm -hmm. educational ministries uh, Sunday school Greek school catechetical school adult Greek language um, and then uh, there's some social aspects, of course, which which are very important. Uh, the um, the food pantry, though, has become truly an, an essential ministry and work uh, within the parish. Um, every organization works to promote faith. Obviously, we're serving in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We're trying to follow the model that the gospel actually gives us, and we're trying to basically emulate everything that's found within Scripture. Uh, showing faith and works combined so that's obviously very important and that's throughout the year the thing is is that when it comes to this holiday season from Thanksgiving to Christmas uh, people are buying gifts people are obviously spending some more money um, it's very sad when we know that people cannot maybe take care of their own family and, and we're not even talking about getting gifts for their children or getting gifts for family members. Some people cannot afford food 
or they can't afford um, healthy food. I should be more specific. Anyone can come to the food pantry anytime and they can get ramen noodles. But we know that this is not something that's a good option as far as diet, right? So the fact that we have fresh food, the fact that we might have to spend a little bit more money, we have to spend with monetary donations that people give to the food pantry or to the parish, we have to buy fresh food or fresh meat or fruit or vegetables. Long Island Cares can supplement some of those things, but if a family comes in and they request uh, a type of fresh protein, whether it be meat or dairy product, whatever it may be, we have to spend a little bit more of our own money to get these um, products. This time of year, it's just very important to remember the blessings that we have and to say that the blessings that other people can receive as well through our, let's say, faith and good giving, God can manifest a blessing on someone else through our own faith and through our own blessings. So this is a goal that we definitely have. Yeah, amazing. And and uh, when I was looking at the food pantry on the St. Nicholas website, um, there's a, uh, and, and I'll p- provide all the links in the podcast uh, show notes, guys. Um, there's a, a, a link for a document that shows you most needed items, breakfast items, shelf-stable milk, water bottles, etc. So we'll provide all that information. But at the bottom of that sheet uh, was a great quote from Mother Teresa. If you can't feed 100 people, just feed one and really you know when we talk about leadership on this show because i don't know if if you guys make the connection here but holiday giving leadership i mean you know as as somebody that's a servant leader father d Mm -hmm. um i'm sure you can help guide people into how important it is to be a person of service and to give and to help people uh in order to fulfill that role as a leader right but in a very simple way this quote says that just feeding one person is the start right it's not as big of a deal as people make it out to be to to be a leader if you can reach one person in any way shape or form that's how you start we're always um you know to use a baseball analogy um I'm always trying to swing for the fences. Uh, you know, recently the Yankees have been trying to do the same thing in home run, trying to hit home runs, and they just can't do it. I don't want to talk about the Yankees too much. I'm a little frustrated, but um, <laughs> we can't, we can't, we're not going to bat a thousand every time. To quote one of my other uh, very beloved uh, mentor priests, we're not going to bat a thousand every time, and we're not going to hit a home run every time. I have that problem all the time, actually. I'm always trying to do more. I'm trying to do bigger. I'm trying to reach, you know, you know, five, six, seven hundred people with a type of ministry, let's just say. And I sometimes miss the fact I'm going to confess to you. You can hear my confession. <laughs> my frustration <laughs> is, um, you know, not being able to, I don't want to say convert the masses, but at least to show you know christ-centered ministry is about love and mercy forgiveness and humility when we can't convey that to the masses it's very frustrating we have to and we can see it tangibly with the food pantry if we're able to provide conversation something social and something physical in the form of food to a family that really needs it we know that we've made a difference we know that we've made um, we've made something positive or we've given something good in someone's life and then that can affect them in another way. The side effect is that we show our own parishioners what it means to work and what it means to serve and when we can reach out to that one family, when we can work with that one individual parishioner or several, God willing, where the light bulb just goes off and says, you know what, I can do this. It doesn't require that much time. It does require some effort and it requires practice. But with patience, again, and with humility, we can really, really make a difference in our parish, in our local community, and it can expand to a, a greater amount of people. We're, we're very blessed in that, in that sense. We're very happy. Thank yeah. God. Amazing. That's that's a perfect way to wrap this up. I do want to say that when you were making a confession to me, were you also looking for lightning to strike this? I was a little here? worried. I was a little worried. <laughs> no, no. It was. It's. I'm being. I'm being. I'm being honest. I have to confess to you, and you have to pray for me. 
That's that's what it is. Yes, sir. There's no lightning strikes. I'm the one that's going to be struck. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to take it for all of us? <laughs> yes, ma'am. I, will I appreciate that. I will take that. the hit. I will take the hit. <laughs> so can I just interject for a moment? Because I'm so taken by this. And I just want to thank you for all the work that you do for the community. And I, I just want to, you know, remind you um, as a human, right? You can outquote me for sure. But, you know, there is a statement in the Bible that says, when two or more are gathered in my name, I am celebrated. So when you talk about the masses and, and being disappointed or frustrated in not reaching the masses, feeding one person is feeding many, right? And, and feeding the soul and, and feeding the body and, and helping us to pay it forward. So I just want to thank you and, and just humbly remind you that that work is reaching the masses. And, and, you know, that way you are moving toward your goal. And visionaries, by the way, never reach their goals. Right. So thank you for all you are. We, also, we can make um, we, we can make a little bit of progress and, you know, two or three are gathered in my name, depending on which scriptural verse we're talking, because it's referenced a few times. But Christ is remembered first and foremost. But then Christ says, I am present with you mm -hmm. and with everything, you know, regarding coronavirus and, you know, shutdowns and social distancing. It really it really bothered me that so many people were very happy to be alone. All of a sudden, everybody, we were forced to become a homebody, but some people really enjoyed that, and they became very vocal to say, I love being alone. I love being by myself. And I said, that's not what Christianity is for. Mm -hmm. We're here to serve and pray together, because like you said, Dana, we're, we're, we even one person, serving one person, I don't know who benefits more, the person that right. is served or the person that is doing the serving mm -hmm. with humility, of course, and with patience and love. But um, I think I think you're right. And, and I have to be reminded of that. I, I That's why I'm venting. That's why I'm sharing that with you, because um, if we're able to serve at least one person and make a difference in one person's life, it's the most important thing. And that's our reminder. Absolutely. And that's um, uh, that's a manifested and tangible blessing. So thank you for the opportunity and thank you for your service to the community and um everything you do and god willing we can just make uh progress moving forward with uh leaps and bounds thank you absolutely absolutely thank you father d that was amazing um uh first of all before i wrap this up i want to ask you uh the, the thing on everybody's mind right now all of our listeners who have heard the previous episode with you are you wearing a yankees t-shirt again underneath there no, I'm wearing my, I think I'm wearing my hometown. Um, uh, <laughs> Last Hold time, on, wearing, he rips it open and oh there's a Yankee shirt under there. Oh my God, oh my God. Oh. I can't no, believe on. I'm seeing this. I'm scared. No, no, no. I'm wearing my Syracuse. Syracuse University shirt. All right. I grew up, I grew up um, upstate New York in Syracuse. So, I have never seen um, a priest disrobe. So thank you for that. <laughs> Merry Christmas. I'm, um, I'm, I'm de-collaring. I'm de shirt <laughs> All right, Father D, uh, I want to wrap it up. I want to say thank you so much for being here today. And in the spirit of the holiday giving show, like we do every year now, uh, my company, Launchpad 516, has a donation for the St. Nicholas Food Pantry of $500 coming to you guys. So oh, thank beautiful. you. Thank you so much for being with us today. And we will. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. To, we will... I'm trying to look official. <laughs> <laughs> no, we really appreciate it. You know, um, um, it's 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 thank you for that. Um, I know exactly what we're going to be able to do. There's been a recent um increase in I heard a, a, a couple of requests for baby formula. Do you know how expensive baby formula is? Yeah, it is. Yes, I do actually. Yes, George has I do. Some young children, I've got uh, you know, my three are sort of grown, they're not, they're not, you know, but. A couple of times, you know, we, we, we have to buy cleaning products for people or we have to buy formula or we have to buy, you know, other things. But uh, we really thank you for that. And as much as the monetary gift is uh, needed, we also thank you for your prayers and we thank you for any type of support. But keeping us in your prayers is very important. And we really uh, we, we know that you're praying for us and we truly appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Father Thank D. We you. appreciate it. Good seeing you. you. You as well. God bless you all, and a blessed Christmas. Happy New Year. You too. Merry you Christmas. Too. 
Fabrizio, you know what we have to do? We have to re-record that Launchpad 516 Studios commercial. That thing is, it's getting stale, buddy. It's getting stale. You need to keep up on it, all right? <laughs> yeah, all right. You can complain all you want, but you got to do something good. Got it? I got it. Okay. All right. Put on that Launchpad 516 Studio song. Let's get this thing going. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's good. That's good. And listen, sit down. Don't say a word. All right? I'll take it from here. Shut up. Guys, it's me. George Andriopoulos, the launch dad himself, here to talk to you again about Launchpad 516 Studios, my baby. This this podcast, this launchcast thing, this 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 office, this has afforded me the opportunities to do some really, really fun stuff. And now we are letting you get involved in that fun. Launchpad 516 Studios is our brand new podcast production company. So if you have an existing podcast or an idea for a podcast, Get involved. Join our family like 15 other podcasts did in November. We have 10 or 15 more on the slate. We should have at least 25 podcasts on our roster by the end of December. And I am so excited. Let me throw some names out there. Discriminology. The Spreading Happiness Podcast. Peace, Love, and Bring a Bat. The Launchcast. Over My Dad Podcast. Sounds Like Autism. Embrace It. The Silva Lining, Chopping It Up with Chef Bynum, The Lie Cab Podcast. I mean, we have a ton. Conversations with Kings is coming. I'm not even going to say anymore because some of these are so secretive you don't even know about them. What does it mean for us to produce your podcast? Well, it means if you're local, you get to use our beautiful facilities. If not, don't worry. We'll record remotely. Relax. Relax, guys. Now, we help you from inception to production, to post-production, to publishing, to monetization, the magic word. We will help you get sponsorships and help you turn this hobby into a career. Who needs a real job when you could be a podcaster full-time? Contact me at Launchpad CEO on Instagram or Facebook or email us at podcast at lp516.com for more info. Join the Launchpad 516 Studios family. Don't miss the boat. I'm telling you, Fabrizio, shut it down, all right? I got it. Oh, my God. What a guy. Oh, my God. Isn't he great? So I was, when you introduced him, I was about to say, and the one and only man who uh, baptized my goddaughter... <laughs> But I didn't want to be like too obnoxious and spiritual. Well, that's what I was going to say. So, so for those of you that don't know here on the show, uh, Dana is the godmother. Dana and her husband James are the godparents to my daughter Joanna, my little baby girl. Yeah. Um, and Father D made that happen because there's all these rules in the Greek Orthodox Church. Oh my Church god! Oh so, my god! So they're like. <laughs> honorary godparents and then there had to be like sponsors it, it, it was a whole thing yeah because we're super catholic yeah and they're super greek orthodox so it was very interesting and i love i love the whole progressive thing of like him getting that because i could name probably every priest i've ever come across in my life in the greek orthodox church that never would have let that happen i know you know and it was a little traumatizing i must admit <laughs> <laughs> okay i've never seen a naked baby in church oh yeah yeah, yeah. i've never seen a naked baby fully submerged in water in church. Yeah, Greek baptisms so, are, not, are not fun. Yeah, like, <laughs> like the motherly instincts wanted, like I wanted to go and like, ah! Yeah, <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. But I let it go because I, I knew it was in the spirit of God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he's so great. So yeah. um, I, I mentioned on there that I'm just getting to know some of the organizations within. I'm actually on the school board now of the Greek school at uh, St. Nicholas Greek Orthodox Church. So I'm just getting in the swing of... of volunteering there um and it's it's really cool they've done so much i mean you've yeah. seen the church yeah. recently but that thing uh that that place a few years ago looked totally different and by the way there was a huge fire there mm -hmm. uh a few years back the the candles in the church started a fire and the church burned down and it was um it was incredible how quickly everything came together to it's put amazing. that place back together and the, the community center the gym the kitchen it's uh it's so cool. So they do such amazing stuff there, and he really is uh, such a great guy. So I'm and happy that we it's really the testament too of like human spirit. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. that's it, and that's what this that's what this episode's about. That's human right. Human spirit and the holiday spirit, right? <laughs> ah, look at that! Oh my God, here we, we have we a guest go again. Here we go. Let's see who do we have here today. Hello. 
Hi. It's Teresa Sorelli from Eden 2 Genesis. How are you? Uh-oh. Well, we can't hear you. I didn't mute you. What's going on here? Are you oh, muted? Yeah. <laughs> you How you doing? Good. Good morning. Good morning. Great to see you. So let me do the brief bio here. Uh, okay. So uh, Teresa Sorelli is the Director of Development for the Eden 2 Genesis program. Um, recognizing a growing need for autism services on Long Island, Eden 2 programs opened the Genesis School in 1995 and the Genesis Outreach Autism Center, both located on Newbridge Road in East Meadow, New York. Uh, the Genesis School serves students with autism from ages 5 to 21. Each classroom has a certified teacher and a behavior specialist, a communication specialist, and one-on-one -on -one teacher aides as needed. The school philosophy utilizes the principles of applied behavior analysis to provide research-based teaching strategies proven effective in the education and intervention of individuals with autism. The Genesis School can also provide parent training, additional in home service provision. I'm going to let my friend Dana take the lead here because Dana and the Genesis School, I told you about that before. So go ahead. Teresa, <laughs> how are you today? Good, good. Thank you both so much for having me on your show. Oh, no problem. Yeah, I, I'm so happy to see you because, um, you know, I do work at the Genesis School providing uh, as a clinical coordinator, providing trainings in addition to uh, my other work. And um, you know, sometimes I don't get to see people across the pond, right? Because <laughs> our program spans Staten Island and Long Island, and it originally, it, it is based in Staten Island and then branched out in 1995 um, to the Long Island area. And I have to say, I'm so privileged and honored to be able to say that I was there when it started. And it was a building, rented two classrooms with um, the first two groups. And then the next year, the state approved two more classrooms. and. Now we have five classrooms, and it sounds small, but um, the, the, the program is, is really growing, and we're really, really proud of the work that we do together. So, Teresa, thank you for all that you do, because um, without development, we wouldn't be able to fund such intensive services for our, our students. Right, thank you. Uh, development just... Uh we fill in all the extra cracks, everything that Medicaid doesn't cover. So all the the technology, which I'm sure during COVID everybody needed extra of. Yeah. So the iPads, the the laptops, um, everything that's needed during a, a pandemic shutdown, but also just things that help our students grow. Yeah, and that changes, right? I always say that um, when I started in the field, I always wanted to only work with babies and I only wanted to work with the little ones. And I did. But then my little ones grew up and I grew with them and their needs changed. And, you know, it, it's amazing to see our seniors, our graduating students and then our adults in the Dayhab program and, and, and what they're able to accomplish with such intensive supports. Um, that we're seeing in our programs. Our three-year-olds become five-year-olds and then they graduate into the school-based program. And then our school-based program graduates into the adult program. And now even our adult program, they're becoming senior citizens. So we're, we're mm -hmm. changing our programs to adapt to their needs. Which is something that when I started in the field, I could have never imagined. I, could, I didn't have that kind of wisdom and foresight to imagine that we'd be in this place. Um, which is, is really wonderful for us to be able to have these conversations and, and support our individuals with ASD with dignity and individual um, attention, which is so important. Absolutely. Yeah, so Teresa, I know you you said you started uh, with Eden 2 during the pandemic, right? Yeah, so I've only been with Eden for a year. I started in November of 2020, so right in the midst of nice. all of the downs. And, Welcome aboard. Um, <laughs> 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 it was really um, speaking with the, you know, Father D that just uh, ended baptism by fire. It was thrown to the wolves right in the middle of everything. And um, thankfully, we have so much support from the community, our family, our friends, our uh, other nonprofit partners. Um, so I've met so many people and, you know, just keep growing that that network of supporters. Yeah. Talk, talk about uh, talk a little bit about um, the struggles during the pandemic that an organization like Eden 2 and the Genesis School faces. Right. So um, our individuals, our students, they're they're used to going out into the community, participating, integrating with um, you know our society, and everything was shut down. All of those uh, routines were disrupted. Um, you know, every, uh, everything from quarantining to increased behaviors to 
school shutdowns, uh, everything that we were experiencing, they were also experiencing, and they're not able to fully understand what was happening either. Um, so trying to just keep the schools open, keep everybody safe, uh, it's been a, a long struggle, and a struggle that continues because we're still in the, the red zone as Omicron's creeping back in. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> a little bit, a little bit of a scary time right now. Um, so uh, when we talk about the difficulties that an organization like yours faces during the pandemic, I'm sure that there have been um, budgeting difficulties as well in terms of uh, things just shifting and changing a little bit. Um, and being that this is the holiday giving show, I always like to talk about um, how much uh, support means to an organization, right? Monetary support and donations from, uh, from, uh, from other organizations and from individuals. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, monetary donations, they go to things like uh, gym equipment, uh, classroom supplies, art supplies, um, like I said before, the technology, everything that is needed that maybe we don't get that extra funding for, but we still need to supply. Um, during COVID, it was cleaning supplies and mm -hmm. making sure everything was safe and sanitized. Um, we're also in the process of uh, expanding our programs because the need continues to grow. So we're going to be opening a new program in Comac and partnering with Christ the King. Um, so we're fundraising for that to renovate that space and again, make it um, accommodating and adaptive to our community. Yeah, amazing. Amazing. Um, so before we start wrapping up, anything that you want to add, Dana? Yeah, so another thing I just wanted to say in terms of funding is what I've seen in the Genesis School that we've had a large need for is really accommodations based on COVID. And what I mean by that is whenever we have, let's say the 15 year old, uh, 16 year old, 17 year old students who would work on pre-vocational skills, right? So for example, they might be tasked with making party favors or making wreaths for the holidays. You know, we have Seasons for a Reasons, which was a kiosk in the mall um, that had to close and had to come back, you know, on site. Um, what I've seen a lot of spending on is um, materials to prepackage so that there's minimal cross contamination. So again, it's it's COVID inspired spending, right? But right. it's it's in the in the spirit of allowing our individuals to still be productive contributors of society. Right. Um, so that's yeah, another thing I've seen as a need. We don't have that kiosk currently because of uh, all of the shutdowns. But those products are still available on Etsy, so I can send you that link and maybe. Yes. Maybe yes. Yeah. I, we'll I always send notes. gifts out. Yeah. We'll We'll put it in the show notes for sure. Uh, Teresa, can you tell our audience how they can help? How, uh, uh, not just from, from a donation standpoint, any help uh, that the organization needs? So definitely just awareness, um, understanding our, our participants and students' needs. Um, when you see us in the community, engaging with our, our students and uh, participants, uh, learning about the programs that we offer, um, just understanding and awareness. Amazing. Amazing. All right. Uh, I want to thank you for being here today, Teresa. In the spirit of holiday giving, the holiday giving show, my company, Launchpad 516, has a $500 donation for the Eden 2 Genesis program. Uh, so Yay. we'll talk and uh, you let me know how I can get that over to you, okay? Thank you. Thank you so much. We thank really you, Teresa. That. Thank you. Thank you, Teresa. Talk soon. She was really, really amazing. She was awesome. And you know what? Considering I contacted her last night at 10 p.m., <laughs> um, I'm very impressed. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, you know, this is so personal to me just yeah. because uh, the Genesis Eden 2 programs have been a part of my life for my entire career. Yep. And to be able to um, spread awareness and knowledge um, about autism and about applied behavior analysis and, you know, for me as a speech language pathologist, um, marrying these fields and having these conversations is really something I'm very proud of. So um, I'm really glad we were able to have her on today. And, um, you know, bringing awareness to the program that is always in need, but particularly now, and particularly in, the, in light of the holiday, and also in light of the fact that the programs are closing on a dime. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, our participants, our students are having a really, really hard time. Some students, I have to say, they do well remotely, but some really don't. And um, the families, the families, they have just been amazing and so stretched. Yeah. So again, I'm just really happy that we were able to bring a little bit of awareness and, you know, um, contribute to the conversation for the holiday. Yeah, yeah, I'm so yeah. happy she was able to come on. And, and yes, we did 
secure this guest last night at 10 o'clock. Last night at 10 o'clock. That's not always how it rolls here. But listen, it's been a damn week. It's been a hell oh of a week. Oh, my God. I need a nap. <laughs> <laughs> so so my, my, my poor son, Johnny, mm. uh, a week and Johnny a half ago, boy. two weeks ago, um, wasn't feeling good. And, of course, what happened? COVID. Um, and so that was a little bit scary for a little while. He's okay now, back to normal, back in school for a day, and then Christmas break. But um, that threw off planning for the holiday show. And I felt like such a schmuck because I've been talking up this show for the last, like, five episodes. Well, it was going to happen. So excited <laughs> to to organize it. But I had ideas for, for what I wanted to do for it. But because this happened, I didn't want to call guests and secure guests and then have to cancel yeah. on them. So I was like, let me wait, let me wait, let me wait. And then by the time everything clears up, here we are going, all right, we got to make this holiday show happen. Let's well, you're just lucky I was up last night. <laughs> I am lucky you were up last <laughs> night. Thank you. Thank you for revealing to everybody that I secured you last night at 10 o'clock yes. too. Yes, <laughs> yes. Hey, showbiz, baby. This is the way it goes. This is how it goes. <laughs> but last night, last night was, um, I, I contacted you right after I went into a Zorn stupor last night. Congratulations, food oh, coma. Oh, yes. I think I've talked about Zorn's here before. Zorn's is uh, here Zorn's in Farmingdale. Zorn's should be a sponsor. Zorn's sh <laughs> not a sponsor, but totally could be a sponsor. Yeah. We, Zorn's <laughs> is this local, what is it, fried chicken Play, it's more it's than fried chicken. It's just a chicken place, chicken like, but it, place. apparently it's historical. It's historical. It's like yes. one of the as a non-native Long Islander, I've learned that it is a historical, yeah, uh, staple in it's, the area. I think it's well over a hundred years. Yeah, it's been here. Crazy. So yeah, Colleen was in the mood for for mac and cheese. So oh, I was and like, they make the best mac and they cheese. They do. But I was like, I don't want to. Just have, have mac and cheese? No, I was like, <laughs> I can't have a, I have to be, Zorn's is like a once a year type of thing for me. Oh no, like not me. Like the fried chicken and it's just, I cannot handle it. Like my body can't handle it. Yeah. So I was like, all right, do you want anything else other than mac and cheese? Are we doing, cause I'm like, I'm not getting a bucket of I never get the fried chicken. chicken. I get the That's rotisserie chicken. Get. You and know. I said, uh, she goes, as long as I get mac and cheese, it, it's fine. So I went in there with Joanna actually. Um, and uh, I got chicken cord on blue. From there. Mm. Like three, Was it good? James th loves that. Really good. I got three individual chicken cordon blues, the mac and cheese for her, and I got Joanna pickles. <laughs> Joanna loves pickles. Did she pickles. stick them in her ear? No, no. She <laughs> she ate them all up. She's, all, she's done with the ear thing, okay. by the way. Yeah. Okay. That's good. For now. I was prepared. I have for a now. cucumber for she Christmas. She has a whole <laughs> slew of other things you'll see on Christmas. She now opens up the cabinet door in the fireplace, and she oh, sits in it. Nice. And she's looking at you, and she's like shutting the door and looking through the glass. She Aww. knows when she's funny. Like She's hilarious. She very yeah. much knows what's funny. And yeah. Not. Yeah, and when she's not being like a little shit, which she's been the last couple well, of weeks. it's the age. Probably because we haven't been able to send her to daycare because of the quarantine. Definitely. But, yeah. Oh, my God, that's great. <laughs> yeah, so I am catering from Zorn's today. I'm starting hosting today. Yeah. So we have um, my brother, my sister-in-law, and my father are coming over today. And... Um, because we catered for the first time on Thanksgiving, um, unfortunately because of a COVID scenario, and it was so wonderful, we, I catered from them for today. Yeah. Um, so after we wrap up here, I'm gonna go pick up the Zorns. So I got rotisserie chicken and chicken color parm, and I'm really excited. Ooh. I know, I'm really, really excited about Sorry, it. I can't wait so. to crash that later. And I, can't, I know. <laughs> um, and then, you know, it's funny because historically, I would have been mortified to say that I ordered dinner for a holiday. Yeah. And now I'm proud. I'm loud and proud and I'm on a podcast announcing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what? It's totally I have in the last few years just because life gets so busy, it's okay to like, take away some of kidding? the traditional stuff, who right? Who kidding? Like I ha I used to pride myself on like my strategic plan to clean the house and now as long as I can get the cleaning people in yeah. before the holiday I'm so proud of myself. So I couldn't get the cleaning person <laughs> Me neither. in. So Me neither. yeah, yesterday was cleaning day and then all I'm thinking about right now is that I have to iron the tablecloth. If I uh, get that done today, I am winning this day. <laughs> <laughs> we share a cleaning person audience, yes. same person. And by the way, and this is going to be a true test. I'm going to I'm going to so Dave, Dave Thompson and I always talk about this on our other show, uh, the Over My Dad podcast, how our wives do not listen to any of our shows. Yeah. Full. So I'm actually going to tell you one of Colleen's Christmas presents, and this will go live by Christmas Eve. And she will she never will hear not it. hear yeah. this. So um, we, we, yes, we share a cleaning person, and we tend to use this person randomly throughout the year, yes. not a set schedule. So I actually got Colleen 
the services of our cleaning person <gasps> on an ongoing basis now. That's a, monthly, a big deal. Monthly, starting with monthly. I was going to say, are you doing bi-weekly? <laughs> no, no. Not only can I probably not afford that, but um, I think we are... I think you're probably the same way. We have to clean before the cleaning person Oh, totally. Comes. James gets so mad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's like, why am I doing this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to clean before the... Because she comes in... Now, I'm not going to say her cleaning person's name, but she comes in like a like a. Oh, like she's a not general. playing. Oh, she's not playing. Yeah. She's not playing. She yeah. will... I think I've seen her one-handed lift up my couch and like sweep behind it. Yeah, it's no, she's... crazy. Yeah. <laughs> she's... And that's like you get, you can't get in her way. No, I'm no. a little afraid when she comes over. No, I, yeah. yeah. So so for right now, because the baby's napping schedule and everything, I'm like, I think I can only logistically handle her once a month. Yeah. Because like last time she came for Thanksgiving, it was like I got to make sure the baby's not napping. I know. And of course, she was napping when they yeah. got there. And well, for me, I have to make sure that the dog's not in the house. Yeah. You know, because he gets very stressed when you touch his things. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. As do I, yes. yes. <laughs> James is the same way. <laughs> we had, uh, the other day, we got a new fridge. So, um, so first of all, we had to pull off this whole logistic move. It was, it was anyway, um, getting it from the front door to the kitchen, it's not, it's a pretty straightforward path, but there's some furniture in the way. Yeah. So, like, I moved it as much as I thought it needed to be moved. And I am a very, like, everything has to go in its place mm -hmm. kind of person. So, of course, when they come in, they, they want extra space. So they push the dining room table mm. up against the wall. And, the th and I'm like, everything inside of me yeah. is, like, on fire. And then the second they walk out, Colleen's like, we need to put everything back in the fridge. I was like, I need to put all the fucking furniture exactly <laughs> where it was. And it, she's loading up the fridge. And I am, like, moving the dining dining room table inch by inch. And I'm like, something's wrong. Everything hurts inside of me right now. <laughs> Yeah, that's a, those, those are real problems, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. I have real problems, as most people know. Um, but, yeah, this was this was a great episode. Uh, I'm so glad that we got to talk to Father Demetrios. We got to talk to Teresa uh, from Eden to Genesis. Uh, I'm glad we got to do this again. It was fun. I, I want to have uh, – so last year we got to have you and your, your handsome husband, James. My better half. On your better half. <laughs> Absolutely your better half. <laughs> Um, Many people agree. <laughs> hopefully, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make something happen. So I'm, I'm putting the request out virtually to all my people at Shannon's Fight. Hopefully, we can get all of them oh on. Oh, my God. That would be so fun. Next week. But what I want to do for sure is I want to do the holiday giving show every year with our people from Shannon's Fight only. I want to have all of us in a room. Oh, my God. It'll be a disaster. I tell It'll be you great. right now, Dawn's never going to come on. She'll say no. <laughs> <laughs> well, she might come have coffee and then just respectfully leave. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so everybody, thank you so much. You know what? Let me play a little. Hold Let's on. do some oh, jingles. My, my music is off. Some jingly music. Here. Where's my jingles? Oh, some this holiday is, stuff. See, this is a not prepared host right now. Here All we right. Go. Yay. How about that? I like it. How about that? So to everybody out there in podcast world, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thank you so much, Dana Battaglia, for joining me today. My this pleasure. So Thank much you for fun. having me. Happy holidays to everybody Happy out there. Happy holidays, everyone. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Kwanzaa. Christmas Kwanzaa. Whatever, whatever you it celebrate, is you celebrate, you just do you. We wish you guys <laughs> a, a very happy holiday season. We will see you next week for one more show before the end of the year All in right. 2022. We're going to knock it out of the park, guys. We'll see you later, everybody. Bye. Into the black The LaunchCast is brought to you by Launchpad 516 Studios, produced by Fabrizio Fugazi and executive produced by George Andriopoulos. Marketing and PR by Media Convergence. Theme song by Tommy Lungberg. Music and sound effects are licensed through Epidemic Sound. The LaunchCast is hosted with Podbean. Make sure to subscribe to this feed wherever podcasts are available and leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts while you're at it, guys. You can find the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Pandora, TuneIn, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, Podbean, and everywhere else that podcasts are available. Follow me, George Andriopoulos, the host at Launchpad CEO on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, or follow the show at The Launchcast Show on Facebook and Instagram, or at Launchcast Show on Twitter. Visit our website, thelaunchcast.com, 
and make sure to follow all the great podcasts produced by Launchpad 516 Studios. We'll see you next time, guys. Yeah.